Hello everyone, this is Double H Mustache, and today we are here with another American Legion's Mathematics League problem from 2014. Individual round. Problem number 6. Compute the smallest positive integer n such that 2014n and, um, and 204n, no, 214n and 2014n have the same number of divisors. So you have this. Okay, so what is 214? What's the prime factorization? It's 2 times 107, and for 2014, it's 2 times 1007. Well, 1007, if you actually keep testing, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19. It's actually 19 times 53. So, how... Let's first off, what are the number of divisors of 2014 and um, 214? Well, there's actually a cool formula for this. If you prime factorize it, and then we're going to take the powers of each prime in 214. So the first power is 1, because 2 to the 1. And the, f the second power is 1, because 107 to the 1. And then we add each power by 1, so 2 times 2. And then we multiply them, so we get 4. So there's 4 divisors of 214. Why does this work? It works because the choices for the power of 2 of a divisor of 2014 is either 0 or 1, so that's two choices, and then the choices for a power of 107 in a divisor of 214 is two choices, 0 or 1, so that's two choices times two choices is um, four choices. So that works for any number, so like if I have 2 squared times 3 to the 5th times 5 to the 10th, I have three choices, 0, 1, or 2, for 2, for 3 I have six choices, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, not, no, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 6 choices. And then for 5 to the 10, I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, which is 11 choices. So that's 66 times 3, which is 188. That's, this has 188 divisors. So you just take each power, add it by 1, and then multiply them together. So for 2014, you have 1, 1, 1. That's 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8 divisors of 2014. So now we need to find 2 times 107 times n. We need to find the divisors of this number, and we need to find 2 times 19 times 53 times n. We need to find the divisors of that number. So what is n? Well, n might have a 2 in it. So let's say it has a 2s, so the power of 2 is now 1 plus a in both numbers. So I'm just saying that n is 2 to the a. And then I'm saying n is 2 to the a times 107 to the b. So it can be... Well, here, 107 times to the 1 times 107 to the b would be 107 to the 1 to the b, 1 plus b. And then, here we would just have 107 to the b, because there's no 107 here. And then, n might have a 19 to the c, so we multiply 19 to the c here, and then 19 to the c plus 1 in the second number. And it might also have a 53 to the d, so 53 to the d, and then 53 to the 1 plus d. Or D, yeah, 1 plus D. Or D plus 1. Okay, so now we have this, these powers. Well, what if you say, what if N has, like, a 3 in it? What if it has 3 to the E and 3 to the E? Well, here, the powers are the same in both numbers. We have 3 to the E on this 214N, and we have 3 to the E on 2014N. So, uh, the way it's going to affect the number of visitors is that it's just going to be E plus 1. So, it's just going to be the same. So we don't care about any other... We want to make n as small as possible. So we don't want to add any other primes into the equation. We just want to stick with 2, 107, 19, and 53. Because that's what we already have. And we don't need to add anything else. So what else can we get rid of? Well, you see, 2 to the a plus 1 is the same on both numbers. So we can get rid of that. And then here, all the powers are different. So 107, the powers differ by 1. 19, the powers differ by 1. And 53, the powers differ by 1. So now we we can try to find when the number of divisors are equal. So we add each power by 1. So b plus 1 becomes b plus 2. c becomes c plus 1. And d becomes d plus 1. And then we multiply them together. So we do that for the next number. b becomes b plus 1. Um, c plus 1 becomes c plus 2. And d plus 1 becomes d plus 2. Okay. So how we want to minimize So what is n? N is one oh seven to the B times nineteen to the C 
times 53 to the d. We want to minimize n. So to minimize n, we have to minimize b, c, and d. In order to do that, we need to find more about this equation. So first, I'm just going to distribute c plus 1 and d plus 1. So we get cd plus c plus d plus 1. And then here we get c cd plus 2c plus 2d plus 4. And then I'm going to distribute the b plus 2 out into both into this polynomial, and I'm going to distribute the b plus 1 into this polynomial. So you get b plus 2, cd, plus b plus 2, c, plus b plus 2, d, plus b plus 2. That, that's the left side of the equation. And on the right side, we get b plus 1, cd, plus 2b plus 2, cd, c, plus 2b plus 2d, plus 4b plus 4. Okay, so all I did was distribute. Okay. And then we... Um, I'm going to keep the b's on the side and then put the c's and d's on the left side. So we get cd minus bc minus bd and then on the right side 3b plus 2. Okay. So hopefully you see how I subtracted things and cancel things out to simplify the equation. And now, we would like to factor both sides of this equation. So let's look at this equation. Here we have cd minus bc minus bd. So, if we think in terms of C and D, we have C plus A and then D plus A. So, that's how we would factor this. No, C plus E. C plus some number. So, capital C. C plus capital C. No, C. C plus E and D plus C. So, if we, if we multiply this out, we will get CD, which we have here. And then we will get E, C plus E, D plus E. Oh, this could be F. So this would be F, and this would be E F. So here, if we compare this to C D minus B C minus B D, here E equals negative B, and F equals negative B. So, yeah. So we just substitute that in. So instead of C plus C D plus F, we have C minus B, D minus B. But we don't have E F. E F is B squared. So we can add B squared to both sides. C minus B D plus B squared equals b squared plus 3b plus 2. Again, the reason I um, added b squared to both sides is to make it so you could factor both sides. So this side you factor into c minus b and d minus b, as we said. And this fact is just a quadratic, so it's b plus 1, b plus 2. So now, if you look at this equation, here we see we have b plus 1 and b plus 2, and then we have minus b and minus b on the left side. So if b goes up, this side is going to go down, because minus b makes it go down. If this side... You, you, oh, minus b makes both factors go down. So c minus b goes down, d minus b goes down, and then the whole thing goes down. b plus 1, b plus 2, both factors go up, the whole thing goes up. Okay, so if b goes down, if b goes up, then the left side goes down, and the right side goes up. So in order to counteract that, because this is the e equality, c and d go up. So if C and D go up when B go up, then we do not want B to go up, because B to go, going up makes this whole thing go up, so we, we don't want that. So we make B as small as possible. Why? Because B going up makes everything else go up. So I just want you to think about that, how B going up makes everything else go up, and just gets too big. Okay? Hopefully you see that. So we make B zero. So if B is zero, then you get C D equals two. That's it. So we've boiled this down into cd equals 2. Now we can make c equals 1 and d equals 2, or c equals 2 and d equals 1. Now if you, what is n in both of these cases? So we use our formula for n. n equals 107 to the b, well, b is 0 in both cases. So we get 1 times 19 to the c. So 19 to the c is 19 times 53 to the d, which is 53 squared. On this side, we get 107 to the 0, which is 1, times 19 squared, times 53 to the 1, which is just 53. So which one is bigger? I mean, yeah, which one is bigger? This one's bigger, because it has 19 times 53 times 53, as opposed to 19 times 19 times 53. So we want the bigger power to be on the smaller number. So in order to minimize it, we get rid of this solution, because it's bigger. So this is our answer. 19 squared times 53. So now we just need to figure that out. 19 squared. 53. You know that 19 squared is 361. 53. 361 times 50 is 118. 
Okay. And so I'm just gonna do some math. Arithmetic. Nine hundred plus one eighty eight plus three is one thousand eighty three. So whole thing. One times fifty three. So hopefully you followed that math, or you could do it on paper, 361 times 53. It comes out to 19133. What is this? This is n. You remember that. that this is our answer. So that's our answer. Okay. So that was a lot. That, I think that was a pretty hard problem. That was a lot to work with. There was a lot of reasoning that went down here. A lot of reasoning about where each prime goes, what each prime is going to do this equation manipulating this equation minimizing c b and d into getting c d equals two and then finding um hutch hutch power goes on hutch number if it's 19 squared times 53 or 19 times 53 squared and then just multiplying it which is the easy part relatively easy part and yeah that's our answer 19133 so what i'd like you to take away from this problem is that when you have a number in prime factorization you add each power by one and then you multiply them together and that's the number of divisors that's the important point from this from doing this problem from learning about this problem i guess because that is going to come up in a lot of problems in both like i've seen it in some mammal problems i've seen it more in like i haven't done many omo problems but i i think i've seen it in like quite a few amc problems this is another national math competition so yeah, um, just know that if you have p1 to the a times p2 to the b times p3 to the c times, I don't know, all the way up, times p n to the um, then it's a plus 1, b plus 1, c plus 1, and then all of the other powers plus 1, and then m plus 1. So you add each power by 1 and then multiply to them together. And this is just a fundamental formula that you have to know in order for many of these divisor problems. And uh, I'm not sure if I use them anywhere else. I'm not sure if I use this formula anywhere else. I haven't done all of these problems, but I'm not sure if you'll be able to do this to use that formula on these other problems. But that that formula comes up quite a bit. So just remember that formula, even if you don't. You remember this whole solution? I, I, no. It, it'll be really helpful if you remember that you have to add the powers by one and then multiply them together. And yeah, that's it. So, um, I hope you liked this problem. I thought that this was a very interesting problem. Um, hopefully you understood the solution, maybe if you didn't. I was trying to do it quickly because you really do have to do this under 10 minutes. This this problem is potentially a like one minute problem. I think this problem would be like the nine minute problem. It took me quite a while to figure everything out. So yeah. And that's it. Have fun doing math.